loud and clear for everybody. If you got an echo, Robert, you're probably logged in in the elite room and in go to webinar. So you're going to get double audio. So you probably just could log out of go to webinar and stay inside the elite trading room or mute one or the other. <laughs> we'll probably solve it for you. All right, let me go ahead and hit the recording button. We'll go ahead and get started. All right, yeah, we got everything up and running. Good. Okay, well, uh, again, welcome to the webinar. This is Daryl Martin from apexinvesting.com on January 8th, 2015. And what we're going to go to do over today is just do sort of a, uh, some of y'all have heard about the trend catcher uh, system that we've been using. Uh, and we released it actually a little about a, about a month ago uh, to our, our beta team and our, you know, our alliance team, which are the, the leaders in the room and traders that help us develop it have been with us a long time. They know what's going on. They know how all the settings work. They know how to, you know, they, they just, they they know how to look at it from a different perspective and to help us battle test it and to deal with any kind of little technical issues that may be coming along the way. Um, and uh, you may have seen that if you've been inside the Elite Room uh, or if you've been inside the NetX Trading Pit uh, because we have traders using this mainly for five-minute binaries or uh, that, that's one group. Uh, and then the other group, of course, is using it for futures, uh, which is you know the main way it was designed to be used for, and then we're like, well, what if we tried this? And uh, we ended up finding that it's working really well with five-minute binaries as well. And a lot of times you'll find at night, uh, you know, Lori and a couple of other traders actually hop in the trading pit, and then they'll post charts over in the elite room, and they'll actually talk through a lot of the trades they're doing in the evening as well, even for the nighttime traders and how they're uh, trading five-minute binaries using this. And of course, during the day, a lot of times we're using it for futures, but you can even use it at night. It just depends upon how you want to put it together. And so today, I just wanted to give you a preview of it. We're uh, basically putting the final touches um, on the software. We want to, our goal is to make this, the whole point of this was how can we make a really, really simple, um, easy system that someone could pretty much pick up and run with out of the gate. Uh, that had all the back testing and stats done on it and really didn't have a whole lot of room for interpretation on it. That doesn't mean that somebody couldn't take it and they couldn't use it in a lot of different ways. Uh, like, you know, somebody's going to do with everything we have, which is not, not a bad thing at all. But we wanted to make it really just, you can come in, you can get started, and you can go. And there's not 45 rules. There's like, here's where you get in, here's where you get out. That's it. And if you did that for the last... Three months, six months, nine months, twelve months. How well would that have worked? Does that sound like something that some of y'all are looking for? Out there, just something that's really, really simple to be able to hop in, know exactly what to do, but also have the stats behind it, where you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours back testing it, and not a lot of interpretation. Because uh, I know, like, I mean, you know, I love the Apex Elite system, but as you know. It does take a time, um, you know, to get in there and, you know, get down all the rules and understand where to make those calls. And I think it's still the best system. But I think it also take it can be very challenging for a lot of traders uh, when they first come in to get going. And I think it's where you want to end up at. Um, and uh, what if a person says it sounds like the day trading system rules? It is like that, but it's a lot more active than the day trading system. So uh, yeah, the day trading plans have been doing great as well. And uh, we have a lot of traders on those, especially those that have been using like the elite bars and stuff to work with them. Um, you know, Marilyn, I mean, she's even marked up some of the day trading plan notes in here from this morning trades that she's taken. You know, 30 ticks there, 30 ticks there, you know, 30 ticks there. So it's over and over again. Those add up pretty quick. And uh, so the day trading plans are one great system we come up with to make it really easy, really simple. The elite system really is not hard. It's just it, it does take more time to, to dive in and fully grab it all, especially if you're new. And uh, we wanted one that was just there was really no room for any kind of interpretation. There was just it was buy here, sell here, period. Uh, and it was active uh, and it can be used on any single market. And so that's where the trend catcher came in. To make that work, we had to make sure it had really tight trailing stops. Uh, that was another thing that people I know have heard of that, that they've been wanting. Is with obviously just really, really, really tight stops on any um, 
system they do because they just they don't they didn't have the account size the capital for the larger some of the other trading systems may have asked them to you know make available so like, hey, you know can you get it down to where I'm risking like a hundred dollars or hundred fifty dollars a trade or you know at least on average where it's not every trade that I put up maybe it's risking thirty or thirty or forty ticks so people can't really uh, take that as well so. Just depending upon your account size and things like that, you know, try to put all those pieces together. Uh, so, with that being said, let's go ahead and pull it up and let's check it out. Okay. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go over here and we'll pull up. Um, let's see here. We can pull up a lot of different things. We'll pull up oil. Okay. And maybe gold and you know Russell and a couple others and. Just, you know, the whole idea here is not to get you in full detail yet because it's not released yet. We're getting all the, making sure we have like one or two more little tech issues that keep popping up, like some little air pops up that we want to get rid of. Uh, and once all that's solved, then we'll be releasing it next week. We want to make sure you have the full training, but I want you to be able to see it, okay? And know what it is and uh, know that the, we're not holding it back to hold it back from you. We're just holding it back to make sure we get any little thing uh, taken care of. And you can I mean, you can ask them any of the beta of the room leaders. They'll say, yeah, we've had a couple of issues, but we've been knocking all of them out one at a time and making sure they're done. So that way we're not, you know, you don't have 500 people or 1,000 people saying, hey, I'm having this issue. We have, you know, five or 10 people saying, hey, I'm having an issue. Um, okay, so I'm just going to look like a normal oil, say, 12 tick chart, okay? Like that's what's being used right now. Uh, first, it's by Marilyn in the late room. She's doing great. She's probably outperforming the system, honestly. Okay, um, so this is not necessarily. I'm not trying to say this is the all-in best thing ever. You know, system. It's just this is a really like the power of the system is going to be in your risk management and in analysis being in sort of a different spot than maybe you're used to. Okay, so if I go in on this and now I'm going to add in over here to my indicators and I'm going to put on the trend catcher okay this is just the indicator itself okay and on the indicator I can go in there's a lot of different things I can do uh, but one of those things I'm gonna say hey show the you know current and historical signals right here okay so first let me add it I'll double click over here and I'll say, you know, show live signals only enough. Show me the the historical ones also. Do I want to see the labels? Yeah, show me like where it got in at. Okay, it's the signal to enter labels. Okay. And there's a couple different places where you can put the air. You can show it next to the arrow or not. Little things like that. Okay. And then you can, of course, change the colors up to match whatever you like personally. Um, and there's some other stuff here we'll go into as well. Most of this you're never going to touch. I mean, visual placement plot colors, backgrounds for uptrends and downtrends and all that stuff. One of the cool things we've done is we've added in the thing, a parameter setting, where if you find parameters that are working really well or somebody else has found them, they want to share them, then you can literally just copy this field. It's a big, long text field. But what it does, it's sort of like a template, but a lot deeper. And it basically has all the settings being used automatically. And so we can just copy and share and paste that, like in a trade room or in a forum, whatever. And... Uh, be able to share what settings they're using that are working really well. So, once I put that up there, there's only a couple other things I would possibly edit. Um, and I'll go over those for you in a minute. But first, I just want to put it on the chart and let you see it. Okay? So, click that. Click OK. Very simple. Okay? Here it is. It's up. It's on the screen. How does it work? Okay? Well... Green means buy, red means sell. Okay, I taught my two-year-old that this week. Literally, John was laughing as I was teaching it to him. Uh, but uh, my little boy, his name's Judah, and I was like, okay, so green means buy, red means sell. I was like, green, buy, red, sell. He got it, okay? He got it, you got it. That's all there is to it. Remember, we wanted simple. I'm not going to have to add any other indicators on my chart for this to work, by the way. Okay? So... Uh, I'm going to add one thing that I'll let you visually see, but you don't even have to have it on the screen. Now, can you add more stuff if you want to edit it? If you want to put a lead on top of this, an MVP on top of this, and deviations on top of this, and ranges on top of this, and everything else? Yes, you can. But my first goal was to make this a very simple, simple system that had really good risk management that allowed your profits to run 
and wasn't as concerned with win loss ratio as I was with net profit. Does that make sense? Like I wanted my main goal was to make money, right? Does anybody have a question about that statement? And maybe I'll even do a good a little example here to show you what I mean. Because I want to prep you for this. I want to make sure you understand. It's one of the most important things, I think, to get down. Is if I go over here and I say that I want... We're going to do like wins. Dollars won. Losses. Dollars lost. Net. Okay? And I go over here and I go, okay, well, I have a trade system that wins nine times and only loses one. Loses wins nine times out of ten. Right? That sounds really good. Everybody likes that idea, I'm sure, right? But, and you've heard me say this before probably, if I make $100 and I win, but I lose, let's say $1,000 when I lose, okay? Some of you are like, whatever, but you've been there, okay? Nine times 100, all right? And then minus you know, one times 1,000. You lost 100 bucks. What if you flip it around? What if you say, well, I won one time, but I made a thousand, and I lost nine times, but I only lost a hundred, so I kept my risk in check. Well, that's better, but it's still not that much better than once you take out fees, you probably didn't make much of anything, right? And this is a little bit different scenario for you. What if you only won four out of six, or four, you know, 40% of the time? But you made, let's just say, $300 when you won. And you kept that $100 race you show when you lost. Well, now you netted a $600 profit. This is probably one of the biggest keys to simple automated trading is the ability not to simply have like, oh, I, I win every trade. I mean, come on, you're, if you want to get that good, you're going to have to get involved in the trade. Okay, it could be a lot more like Maryland putting trades on where you're getting involved in the price action. But what if you can get in there and you can net out a profit with a, because you're win, when you win, you win so much more, three times that of when you lose. Even if you lose, maybe a little more often. And you'll see some of the best traders in the world. The tur tur turtle traders are infamous for this, knowing having that they have like a worse. They're like you know ten, fifteen, maybe twenty percent win ratio. Okay, yet they you know clean house. How do they do it? Because their wins are so much larger than their losses. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Scott? <laughs> So that was part of the goal of the system was, okay, we're gonna have to keep our wins, we're gonna have to keep our losses really small, and we're gonna have to let our, our profits really run um, because we don't have any room for you know interpreting and figuring it out if we wanna make it as simple as possible. So, so we put this system on here, and this is just the system going, trading 24 seven, all that. And I'm like, well, you know, sometimes you can get chopped up you know, like things are just like like going like this right here. So you're getting in, getting in, getting out. Well, what is getting in and getting out? First, let's make sure that's really clear for you. Okay. Uh, we add a toolbar over here. And you'll see how this will get easier and easier and cooler and cooler as we add stuff in. Okay. I'm just trying to keep it really simple for you. And bear with me. This is actually the first time I've taught this publicly outside the beta room here. Um. So if I have a buy, for instance, okay, then there's my buy. You know, to get your buy at forty-eight fifty-one, okay. My stop is at the low of this bar that I got in on. I then will trail the stop 
with the trend catcher line. And I will exit when the trend catcher flips. Right there. Okay? So, sold right there. One stop above. Trail with the line. Exit when the trend catcher flips. Okay? So, on this trade, I get in. Well, that one got stopped out, right? This one I get in. Trail with the line. Trend catcher flips. So basically a break even trade. Let's try to get in short. Stops right there. Trail with the line. Trend catcher flips. Okay, does can everybody follow along the rules on this system? Like, do you actually feel like you could go trade this right now if you had this indicator on your screen? Is that and be honest with me, I mean I don't need the feedback because I'm trying to, my goal here is to make this as simple as I possibly can for you. Could, I mean, and if you don't think you can yet, please tell me. I mean, I'm, I'm really asking you, like, be blunt. Why not at the top of the arrow? I would love to get in at the top of the arrow. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, the the signal confirms right there on the close. It, clo it confirms on the close of the bar, so it's like that's what's one tick above the bar. Um, and so I wouldn't know that the trend catcher had flipped until the close of this bar. That's why I'd be getting out right there. Okay, does that make sense? So basically, I didn't have the arrow until that bar closed. No backwards painting going on. So, question that comes up. Did this profit overall? Okay, we're about to get into that. And you're going to see this is one of the best parts about this. Okay. Yes, we did. We had a couple losses, like right here. If we just want to change the color, that is a loss. That one right there, it's a loss. It's a smaller loss. So if we just tracked just this, we go here. And I'm going to show you that it's even better than what I'm doing right now. You'll see this. Okay. Right now, I'm trying to make sure I understand how to, would you be able to execute it. Okay. So right there. So we made 34 ticks, we made 16 ticks. You know, we basically lost about 16 ticks. Over here, lost two. As far as that trade's wiped out, we're up 32 ticks right now. And then plus 10, so we're up 42 ticks. And then we're in another trade right now that's floating, okay? So right now with a 13 open tick risk, okay? Right, it's the close of the bar that counts. That's right. So I'm in here and my stop is one tick below this bar. This is my entry is one tick above the bar. That's it. So net right here, we're up like 42 ticks on the morning session. If you took every single trade, maybe that's the best idea, maybe that's not. I'm gonna show you how to know, okay? But before I get into that, I want to first show you, and some people will just trade this, like just straight out the way it is on the chart. But the first first thing I want to do is, does everybody under, do, does everybody feel like they understand the rules? I'm going to get rid of all my little lines. Like, could you trade this literally like in five minutes? I mean, put the thing on the chart, could you actually just do what I just taught? Is there anything about that that was really complex? Well, understand the chart. Somebody brings up bid ask, which is always a valid point. Understand the chart is plotting last. So that actually means there's fills at that point. That's not bid or offers, it's last. When you're looking at a chart, you're looking at the last price. So that's actually a much better way to validate a trade. Now I could put bid or put offer, but then I'd have to factor in bid offer. I put last, that's where trades were being filled at. And it shouldn't be 30 ticks. 
and bid offer, even if you were accounting for or not accounting for last. I would hope not. Usually paying one, two ticks at most. So we go one trade, two trades, three trades, four trades, five trades that we've counted in our number so far. So five trades would be five ticks. At most, ten ticks. I don't know where you get five times six dollars. Oil is a tick wide. Or right now, it's, I mean, it's literally like a tick. So maybe you're talking about like spreads, like Nadex spreads or something. But right now, remember, I'm talking about futures. So if you go apply it to a derivative, things will it's derived and it'll change. Is that what, maybe what you're talking about? You're talking about derivatives? Right, I'm talking about futures. Okay, so if you want to tighten it, but that spread, go over to gold, one dollar wide. I have not in any way tried to apply this to Nadex in the money binaries, out of the money binaries, or anything except for using them on five minute binaries. That's all I've tried. And it works so good that I'm probably not going to work on much else. <laughs> okay. When does the bar paint? The, actually, you probably just saw it. Um, it actually will start painting before the bar closes, and then it will paint. It'll, it will solidify. It'll become like cyan, whatever, and then it will paint at the end of the bar. Okay? So if you're going to use this on binaries, Adrian, then five minute binaries, but we go down to like three ticks. It's a completely different system than what I'm teaching you right now. That's what like you'll see Lori be doing in the room. Is she'll be trading this on three tick binaries on Euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, and dollar yen. And she's getting in for like 20 to 35 bucks. Sometimes we're at the money, just like at night maybe, but usually in the morning, like, you know, out of the monies. And she's hopping out 25, 35 dollars later. So in, out, in, out, and out of the trades, you know, not wasting time, not staying in them, not waiting till expiration. But first thing what you see is how to do something on the underlying market, the futures market, the forex market, the stock market, etc. Okay, so really, really simple. Get in, get out, all that. Okay. Now, what are the other things we can do? Is we can say, well, is there any kind of stats? How can we know how this thing has performed? Well, this would be basically taking every single trade around the clock. Did any of you get into trading so you could trade 24 hours a day first? Like, does anybody want to do that personally? You're going to be sitting there hitting buttons 24 hours a day. So, no, I didn't do it for that. You probably didn't do it for that either. All right. So, let's look at this. What are the stats if you were to trade, you know, 24 hours a day? How would you like to get those stats in a click. We're just going to go over here. We're going to go to simulation. We're going to add that to our chart. Okay. And we're going to click OK. We now have, if you took every trade 24 hours a day, automatically plotted on the screen for you. Okay. They're all there. All the, remember that you, these auto look pretty similar to what I just showed you a second ago, right? Those lines I had drawn on the chart, there they are, okay? It's on the exact same rules I just told you. Get in, set your stop, trail it, get out when it flips. Get in, set your stop, trail it, exit when it flips, okay? All the stats going all the way back. This is if you traded 24 hours a day. Doesn't mean that's the most profitable idea, it's, I'm just letting you know the stats are there. Okay? So it made 1,300 ticks. And this is over just a you know, few months period. Okay? 
but you can load up more data, less data, whatever. So if it made 1,392 ticks on oil, that is worth $10. That's 13,920. And I'm gonna show you how to make this obviously better. Okay. And then you pay 2561 times $10, not $10, $4 in fees. So you netted a measly, not that impressive, $3,000 because you traded, you sat there 24 hours a day and basically made your broker really, really happy, making 3600 bucks. okay? Not something I'm in favor of doing. Now, what if, who could tell me when most of the volume is happening um, in the market? I mean, I know we got oil traders in here. 9 to 12, 9.30 to 12, somewhere around there. There you go, Kevin's like 9.30 to noon. There you go, yep. The main, the main, obviously during the pit session and even a little bit before the final hours of the pit session. You can look at volume and see it. So what if we narrowed this down and we got just the stats for just 9.30 to 12? The highest liquidity hours. Now we could go, we could get any hours we wanted to, but if we did that, okay? So let's go over here and go, what if I just want to trade 9.30 to 12? Then I can say, well, only show me plots and you can make your own schedules or use the ones, you know, there's like default 24 seven, you know, built in there or the, the regular trading hours, or you can load a schedule or you can make a schedule and save it. So just to show you how to make a schedule, show you how easy it is. So I just want to trade Monday, 9.30 in the morning. And I don't want to take any additional trades past 12, but I need to be flat, we'll just say by two o'clock. Two o'clock Eastern there. Okay. So that be that way I'm flat, I'm not carrying a trade over. So yeah, we are looking into that, Joseph. So that would be one of the next, you know, layers we, we looked at it. So I built that. But now I go, well, I want to do it on Tuesday, and I want to do the exact same schedule on Wednesday, and the same schedule on Thursday, and the same schedule on Friday. What I've said is, don't take any trades unless they happen at 9.30. Don't take any additional entries after 12. If I'm in a trade that's running, 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 get out of it by 2 o'clock because I don't want to carry it past the 2.30 pit close time and have my margin go up and all that. Does that make sense to everybody? And I could even go in and click, you know, let's save this schedule as my 9.30 to 12 schedule. And now in the future, I can just load that schedule on any instrument I want to. Okay? So I click OK on that. Now I got that schedule built in. If I want to check it, I mean, it's right there. By the way, that schedule is also in that parameter setting. Remember, so we have that big parameter thing at the bottom. That's still down there, so I can still use that whenever I want to. Okay, so there it is. Uh, but now, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm also gonna go over to the simulator. So th this is gonna make it where the arrows will only plot. The alerts will only come up between 9.30 and 12. This will make it where I can at least see the simulated stats uh, following those exact rules I just gave you. We can load that 9.30 to 12 schedule. Right there, so I'll click open, and what it'll do is it'll actually populate all the days for me. That one actually takes it to 2.30, but. If I were to make them two, just to make a match. Right there. Over here. And obviously, this is like you. Once you get down what you want, you got it done. Okay. And I'll show you some other, like an even easier way to figure out what hours you want to trade it. 
Okay, so now we have that done, and now what we're going to do is, since we've applied our schedule, we're going to click OK. And now, it's only taking trades during 9.30 to 12 o'clock each day. Okay? No trades are being taken in the evening, early in the morning. Okay? And all my stats, see how it kept that trade open until... Because remember, it can keep it a trade open until 2 o'clock, but it won't take any new trades after noon. Right? So each trade being plotted on there, each trade being accounted for, all the way through. Now, how much money did I make? Did I make more money? Did I make less money than before? Well, before we saw that we made 1,300 ticks. So this time we made 2,082 ticks times 10 bucks. So that's 20,820 taking significantly less trades. Okay. 652 trades times 10, or 24. Only paying $2,600 in commission because we literally, instead of taking, like, having 2,400 trades, we only had 652 trades. So we just saved ourselves like $8,000 in commission. Okay. And we found that we actually, it's better trading hours. Okay. And then if I go over here, 20,820 minus 2608. So after fees, I'm looking at about an $18,000 profit. What's the drawdown on that one? On this one, oh, we didn't record the last one. We can go back and look at it. But this one, uh, 284, so $2,800 drawdown on an $18,000 profit. You can also trade minis and cut all those numbers in half, you know, et cetera. Does that look pretty good? I mean, this is this is pure automation, okay? So this is not going in and trying to squeeze every tick out, analyze the markets. I mean, it's not complex in any way. Pull 18 grand out on that. That's not, we're never in more than one contract. Never, never more than one contract with these stats. This isn't like buying, we were in five contracts as it was going, okay? Uh, this right here, let's see, how many days back was this? Let's look. This is taking us back to first trade on September 5th. So October, November, December, January, so four months. So about 80 trading days. And you traded two and a half hours a day, traded a single contract, and had no difficulty in your analysis. Like you didn't interpret anything. So, and I mean, I'm not, again, there's great ways to trade. I mean, I have I, Elite MVP. I love Elite MVP, okay? It's just you you do have to be more experienced. I mean, Maryland rocks Elite MVP. I, I love MVP. I rock Elite MVP, okay? A lot of you do. A lot of you have embraced it, loved it, and made a lot of money off of it. So, but a lot of people have said, hey, I need something simple, <laughs> at least to get me going. And... Uh, you know, I need to know that it works and not back test. And then you get all these ideas. So some of the ideas that might come out of your mind, we're going to go into those, but we actually have the ability to even filter those out. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to show you that in a second too. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. And then we're going to go into like how you can even test out other, you can change things up. Okay. So one other thing is we added one other indicator. And that was what if I, you know, because you know, the market can get, we've all been there, can get choppy. Okay, and one thing we were looking at is what if we looked at like trend catcher on like say a ten minute bar, and only took trades on the diagnostic bars that match the trend catcher on the ten minute bars. So if trend catcher on ten minute bars is long, then I'll only take longs on the diagnostic bars. So that way I'm sort of staying with the trend and I'm not getting every little oscillation because right now we're taking every time it goes up, every time it goes down, we're taking every trade. Okay. Still, we're netting out an eighteen thousand dollar profit. That's good. You know, can we make it better or not by maybe putting a confirmation in? Okay. So what we did is we made a confirmation indicator, so you don't have to have two different charts open. So saying, hey, look at ten minute bars. Okay. And then we made it where the simulator would actually also look at that confirmation 
And it would also only chart the signals based on the confirmation. Notice I do have to change it on all three if I want to change it up, okay? That's, okay, so now let's look at what if I just took the trade between 9, 13, 12 that had that confirmation on. Now, I don't have to have the confirmation indicator on my chart. I'm just doing it visually so you can see it, okay? So, how did that work out? Did I make more? Did I make less? Okay. Did I do more trades? Did I do less trades? Well, one thing that you may or may not have noticed on this one, you made a little bit less money, but you took a lot less trades and you had a really low drawdown. Look at our drawdown, 147 ticks versus like 264 and like 400. We'll go back. I, I totally should have recorded this as we we're going through. But uh, get this over here, and then we get one more of these. I know these sort of start blocking up the chart, but I just I want you to be able to see the trades as we go here. I might even unwind it so we can also add in those drawdowns. So we made one thousand eight hundred thirteen tick times ten. Okay, we made eighteen thousand dollars at two hundred sixty four trades. Okay, times four, we had thousand dollars in commission. So we netted eighteen thousand one thirty minus one thousand fifty six, seventeen thousand seventy four. Okay, so let me go back in. Let me also add in the drawdown because uh, you got to survive uh, to make any of the money. Correct. So let's look at all the drawdowns on here. We have a. Let me put this. 1470 drawdown. I'm going to go back and grab the other drawdowns just so we have them. All right. And we can compare. Hit the wrong button there. And then we can compare them. That's going to take forever to figure out which one that was. There we go. Okay. So now let me turn confirmation off real quick on the stats. Now it's getting a little bit busy to look at with all these calculators on here. Okay, so simulation. All you gotta do is turn the confirmation off to false. We click OK. Alright, so you made a thousand dollars more. You took twice the amount of trades. Um, let's see what we got. Minus 28.40. And then I guess what we'll do is we'll also add in how many trades were taken. You know how busy you were in commissions here. Okay, 653 trades. Let me put confirmation back on. And then we're just going to look at these stats. Because this is what I want you to get into. What I want you to really see the power of. And then also I'll take confirmation off and I'll just look at the schedule around the clock. Okay. All right, then we got only 264 trades, half the trades, half the stress, okay. And then let's go over and let's look at one last piece. Let's figure out what the number of trades was when we didn't have confirmation on and we didn't have a schedule. We just traded 24 hours a day. Okay? So once that pops up, there we go. And All right, we had a 745 tick drawdown. There we go. 
And we had 2,000. Get over here. We got too many calculators on the screen. <laughs> Okay, and we had 2,562 trades. Okay, so who can tell me which one made the most money out of all these trades? Uh, can you give a brief, good question, a brief explanation of drawdown. That means at the peak of whatever, like let's say you start with 10 grand and then you made 12 grand, then you're up to 14 grand. How far down did it go? So if you got in at the worst possible time, okay, if you got in like right before the worst losing streak the system ever had, what would you have lost? So if we're up to like $15,000 and it had a $1,400 losing streak, but you actually start with just 10, then you'd be down 1,400. So it lets you know like, hey, this is sort of the peak to valley. This is a, the drawdown, at least historically, that's taken place. So I just need to make sure my account's bigger than that whenever I decide to implement the system. Does that make sense, Christopher? It's probably one of the most important numbers that most traders don't know. Um, well, they all had drawdown. Every one of them had drawdown. So this one was no schedule, no confirmation. This one was schedule, no confirmation. And this one was schedule with confirmation. So which one do you mean, David? Because they all have drawdown. Exactly. Helps you know what to plan for in your risk budget. You're exactly right. So I mean like if this was the if this was the drawdown, seven thousand four hundred fifty dollars, would having a three thousand dollar account be sufficient to be able to trade the system? No. Nah. You need more than three grand if you but if the drawdown's fourteen hundred and seventy, having three grand could be, you know, sufficient to trade the system, right? I'm not saying that's what you want to have, but I'm like, at least you'd have enough to deal with the drawdown and have margin to place the next trade. Okay? Now, check this out. This drawdown was half. Half the amount. Okay? 1470, 2840. I mean, half minus a few dollars. All right? Because what is 479, 40? So 2940, like basically, it would be half. So, if you had the ability to take a $2,800 drawdown, could you not do two contracts and still have the same, pretty much the same drawdown, less 100 bucks, and now double your income after commissions from 17 to 34,000 with the same drawdown as this right here? Get the same drawdown trading every trade but make 34000 just by saying I'll take half the trades, only trade two and a half hours a day, and I'll just do double the contracts because my drawdown's so much smaller that I can manage it. If you can't, if you can't, you're still making 17000 So if you can't, then you probably should be focusing more on that. So... The best system does not always take the most trades. We just proved that fact. The top one took 2,562 trades, only made 3,600 bucks. The best system doesn't necessarily take every trade, even during a limited time. We proved that, and we found you could actually make double the amount of money using the same amount of risk on the drawdown side by just using one simple filter and that's it
Everybody grabbing this? Everybody picking up what I'm putting down? We're not done yet. <laughs> okay. Um, what confirmation will we look for after the arrow? You're done with the arrow, man. There's nothing left. It's, that's it. Red, sell. Green, buy. It'll be like cyan or magnet or whatever. I think cyan on both, maybe. But it'll be cyan, and it'll say trend catcher alert. It'll actually tell you, okay, audio. It'll give you your visual alert when it potentially may change, okay? So it's potential. It's going to show it. Now, it may go away. But it's like, hey, pay attention. Be ready. Have your finger on the button, all right? Get up your DOM, you know, set up your DOM with like a 25 tick, you know, stop loss offset. So it's just there. You know, just tighten it up, right? Hop in. Boom. Now just use Chart Trader and trail your stop. So you'll have a heads up. Now, depending on how fast the market goes, I can't control that, right? So there's only so much we can do. But I can give you a heads up when it's at, it knows that, hey, if this bar closes, Okay, it looks like it's going to close, then it's going to flip. And so it's telling you, hey, be ready. Okay? So, but once it's green, that's buy. Once it's red, that's sell. So the 10-minute bars, how do the 10-minute bars work as a filter? Okay, so let me... Screenshot that after all that work, right? I am recording, but still. <laughs> Here, let's get rid of a thousand of these little calculators. As soon as I delete them, somebody's gonna be like, well, What did that one say? Um, okay. So, how do the filters work? What they do is just a uh, so I'll show you, this is basically, if I was looking at a 10 minute chart, it would be a red trend catcher, a green, like if I put the trend catcher on a 10 minute chart, then it'd be showing red right here, it'd be showing green right here. So if I go on to the simulator and I say, require the confluence on say the 10 minute chart, I mean, you can try 10 minute, 15 minute, whatever. But the beautiful thing is you have the stats instantly, right? And let's go over here. Let's make them all line up. Okay, so they're all saying the same thing. We got 10 minutes on the simulation. And we got 10 minutes on the trend catcher over here. And let's put our schedule back on how we had it so that way everything's lining up. Okay. Basically, what's going to happen is okay. So we got the schedule now on the trend catcher. Now let's put the schedule back on the simulation. Let's click that. Now that I've saved that schedule, I can just get a load of saved schedule. Say what by nine thirty to twelve. As soon as that's done, I'm click OK. So question, what's the minimum amount in your account needed to use the trend catcher? Well, that depends upon what system you're running. If you look at the one we just pulled, right, that the screenshot is pulled up, this is where the stats come in. This is how you know the answer. Because what instrument are you trading? What hours are you trading it? And how tight can we get it? Because we can get it pretty tight. So on that particular oil trade, Joseph, I mean, I would say a minimum amount would be three. And you're basically going to want two to three times your drawdown, okay? Um would be the minimum amount. So my max drawdown on that planned out was about 1470. I'd want two to three times that amount as a minimum in my account, okay? And that's not per trade, that's like, like you know, losing streak, okay? Per trade is much smaller, obviously. So pulling this up to sort of let you see what it's doing on the filter. But I mean, it's pretty simple. If it's green on the 10 minute trend catcher, then it'll take green diagnostic bar trend catcher trades. If it's red on diagnostic bar trend catcher, when it's green on 10 minute trend catcher, it won't take those trades. So it's basically using a little bit smoother trend. Okay. And it's amazing because I thought this would not work as well. 
by adding it in, but it did. Hey, hold on, I got a little mic issue in the... Uh, so, has anybody went through this scenario? You go in, you're like, oh my gosh, that was such a good trade. I missed it because I had this filter or that filter. In this case, confirmation. I had long confirmation on 10-minute bars. It's a short signal. It hadn't flipped yet. I didn't get the trade. That was such a good trade. Maybe I shouldn't have used confirmation. And you start second-guessing everything. Okay? The problem is, what you don't know is that there's 30 or 40 more trades that were like little 10 and 20 tick losses that added up that wiped out that nice big win. And so over the course of time, even though yes, that trade that day on that chart or those few days on the few, you know, the week or so or month or so that you looked at, you missed out on some good ones. But the reality is you missed out on a whole lot of bad ones that it's really easy for some reason for us not to see as traders. Is anybody else guilty of this problem? Am I the only person? So a few of you, yeah. You go, oh my gosh, I should have made that short trade. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to get this across because I know that if you've traded for any amount of time, you suffer from this, okay? Going, oh, I should have got that. How could I have got that? What can I do? How can I tweak my system? And that's one of the reasons I wanted to build this automation in so I could look at the stats and go, I have an idea. What if I would have not got in when the confirmation, and boom, the stats, like, I, they doubled. I ended up making uh, half the trades, I made the same amount of money with half the drawdown. So I can do twice the amount of contracts and do double the amount. But I missed out on those trades. Yeah, but you make more money in the end because you don't have all the little losses that are getting you, okay? All right, I'm just making sure everybody can hear me. <laughs> So, just be aware of that. That's that's part of trading. It will mess with you. It doesn't matter what system you use. I mean, any system on the planet. Greed is a very tricky thing, and it'll make you second guess everything about every system. Which you want to. That's where the stats really come in. Now, one of the things I talked about earlier was the ability to go in and. Find the best time. So we can go over here. Actually, we'll do it on a simulator. That's really where we need to do it. Okay? So we're going to go here to the simulator. And this is one of the coolest parts, I think, out of this entire thing. We're going to get rid of the schedule. Remember that one that wasn't near as profitable? Okay, trading 24-7. We're gonna put it back on that. We're gonna click okay. Okay, on this, let it do its thing. And now we're back down, you know, back to making, you know, having a thousand trades and 872 take drawdown and, you know, on and on and on, okay? Oh, and then now we have the confirmation on on this one. Okay, so we're okay. We figured out confirmation's better. And so we left that on. That made our numbers a little bit better than they were, but not a whole lot better. Okay. Uh, and But here's what we're going to do. And we can even, we can get rid of the confirmation. We can add it on. So I'm just going to leave it on. Your choice. Remember, all you have to do to change that on the simulation stats is all you have to do is change like confirmation right there, that confluence of the... Like, 10 minutes, so you just put 10 minutes, 15, 5, whatever you want in there. True or false? Okay, very simple. So we have it on true right now. And I could go in and I can leave it on or off, but I can go in and hit trend confirmation report one button. Just click that. And instantly, what is going to happen is I'm going to get a report of every single trade that was taken, broken down by day of the week, by time of the day so here's actually all the trades every trade profits losses I can sort and go well, what was 
my largest loss. Largest loss was 26 ticks. What was my largest profit? My largest profit was 209 ticks. Not too bad, right? So I can actually see my largest loss, my largest win. I can see every single trade documented in the thing, okay? But I can also go, you know what? What times, let's say, make an average of, let's get rid of these times that just don't make money. Okay, that sounds good, right? Let's see what times a day actually are the most profitable times of day. And then we need to cover our commission, maybe give ourselves a little room for a little bit of slippage. So at least an average of three ticks of profit. Click OK. Now I have the times a day that net out, okay, or the average tick per trade, that means wins and losses combined, is three or more. Like if it's, so every time I hit a trade, whether I win or I lose, I make three ticks. That's what expectancy means, okay? So, meaning like after if I've taken thirty tri if I've taken ten trades and I add up my wins and my losses, I made thirty ticks out of ten trades. Therefore, I made three ticks a trade. Okay. And I go okay. Well, all right. Well, so this half hour makes eighty three ticks, fourteen ticks, sixty seven ticks, forty five ticks, eighty three ticks, and I can find what half hours are best for my schedule. Maybe I'm a nighttime trader. Maybe I'm an afternoon trader. Maybe I'm a morning trader. And I can go in and find the best times. And I can exclude the worst times. I can then even go in and customize my schedule to only show the times I want. Okay? So maybe I go, what if, you know, I wanted to only trade on certain days of the week, hour, whatever. But I mean, I could say, I could literally customize the entire thing to only give me the 10 to, let's see, let's say, the 11.30 trades and the 2.30 trades on, you know, Friday, which would be pretty nuts because that'd be, be trading after pit. But if you want to do that. Um, but you could literally customize the schedule because you can go into the scheduler over here and you could have multiple sessions. So inside the simulation session here, you go in, and I'd actually do it on my trend catcher session, but inside the simulation session, if you would actually look at all the stats, then you can go in and I could say, well, I want Monday, and let's say, I'm just making up a schedule at the moment right now, okay? But nine to uh, Monday at 9.30, okay? And I can say, but I also want to get in at 10.30, and we'll say to 11.30. But I want to be flat on Monday by 2 o'clock. And so we'll only give you signals between 99.30 and 10.30 and 11.30 on your stats. Does that make sense? So like I got really narrowed down the schedule there, but I could make any schedule I wanted to. Oh, I gotta go back in and change one thing. But uh, is the sound coming through okay? Somebody said the sound dropped. Are y'all hearing me okay? All right. All right, you can hear fine. Okay. So, so yeah, you can go through it. Basically, you can make any schedule you want to. You can, I mean, you can literally like just keep adding schedule, schedule, schedules. You can have it as complicated as you want to on there. Um, I recommend that you don't get into analysis paralysis, and that's one of the things I'm trying to sort of figure out as I'm teaching, as we're putting together the final training to launch this out. Is it would? It's so easy. I think you could probably see to go in and just, you know, go try, try to optimize it down to the perfect 30 minutes. I mean, remember, past performance, not indicative of the future. Don't get overly optimistic about, like, I'm only going to pick, like, the every other 30-minute hour of the day that works with the, you know, highest number. And, 
you know, I'd recommend you sit down and you trade your trading schedule. But, I mean, if you see something that's just consistently not working, of course you don't want to trade it. But don't get, like, overly... Just don't o- overdo it, I guess would be the way to, I could put it. I mean, as you saw, 9.30 to 12.30, you know, it worked just fine on the indicator. I don't know what I did. Um, open a new chart. But the stats, um, other things that you can do with the stats, you can go in, you could say... You know, Matt consecutive winners and losers. You could actually filter by that. Okay? We actually don't have that many Matt consecutive, but you go in and go, well, Matt consecutive losers. Doesn't do that well on Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Let's get rid of those 7, 6, 7, you know, 6 is whatever. We get rid of those ones. That's, those are your drawdown trades, right? So you can get rid of those. Um, you can say, I only want ones that have a number of total ticks of this amount. I only want ones that have at least this many trades to count towards my stats. There's really an infinite way you can um, go in and do it. To me, the easiest way is to say the average ticks. So what was my average ticks out of all of my trades? What was I making at least this much on average? On every trade I entered, my win and my loss, I made at least so many ticks on every trade. And then if you're going to do number of winning or number of trades total, you want to definitely pull more data so as well um but that's pretty much it it'll allow you to you know basically get down any schedule you want find the times you want that are profitable if you want to go down and you want to look at the actual trades they're all listed in here okay um even and the the excel sheet is automatically saved for you with those uh settings so you won't ever lose that like if i go over here this is sort of cool um See where these at? There we go. That's yeah, so all like back test. So it actually saves every time you pull the simulator. Okay, it actually saves the Excel sheet for you. So all the settings will always be in there. You'll have all your stats. I mean, you could delete them. I mean, they're not big. They're really small, but you can delete them if you want to. But it'll save all of them as you go. And you're like, what were those settings I had on that one that was awesome? And it's like, right there. Defaulted will be basically 24-7 open. Because, I mean, it's going to vary by instrument. It's going to vary by your schedule. Do you want to trade at night? Do you want to trade during the day? Do you want to trade in the afternoon? Do you want to trade oil? Do you want to trade gold? Do you want to trade Russell? You know, on down the list. Does that make sense? But you don't have to spend, ever again, hours and hours and hours back testing. You don't have to go, what if I would have done this? You know, once I said, what if I just took profit when it was, you know, the market moved 10 ticks and I got out? Maybe that works great, maybe it doesn't. Well, we have a setting in there called early target exit. So you can go in and, for instance, if I go in and just add on just the simulator, make it really simple. Add the simulator on, and I can say, you know, what if I, uh, my early target, what if I make that 10 ticks right there, okay? That means get out after 10 ticks. Take every trade, of course, this is around the clock. I can tighten up the schedule, but there's all my stats. Did it work that well? I had 2,500 trades. Now, again, this is around the clock. Okay, well, what if I add confluence in? A little pickier. Yeah, it's not liking that. It's like, yeah, that's a new thing. That's like one of the reasons why we haven't released it yet. <laughs> Weird little bug like that. Um, and then let's see, go into a custom schedule. Because I just, I, I'm downloading the newest version every morning. There we go. 9:30 to 12. We'll see if that pops up for us and works, or if it gives me that error again. But you can go and you can test. What if you took 10 tick profits? What if you took 20 tick profits? What if you took 30 tick profits? I found one that was great, but it took 30 tick profits. Um, and did really, really well. So, but 10 and 20 wasn't quite as good. Um, question, do I need a Leash Ninja um, to use this? I'm not sure if the direct edition will work. Yeah, uh, free edition will work to pull this up and use it. Direct edition will work just fine. Um, the benefit of leasing Ninja is that you get the ability to use the static DOM and the chart trader and the ATM. So like you can click a button, your stops automatically set, you control it. So 
which I mean, compared to the cost of not having that stop in, and or making a mistake by not being able to use the static DOM because the dynamic DOM is jumping around on you, it's quickly worth it once you're live trading. So, um, another benefit if you own it and you open with NinjaTrader brokerage, then you actually get the cheapest commissions. It wants a little bit more data. Um, let's see here. Does that answer your question, Robert, though? You don't have to be leasing Ninja to use it. You actually don't even have to trade on Ninja to use it. You could use it to pull it up, and you could put your trades on Think or Swim or whatever else you wanted to also. Uh, do y'all see the value? Do the, the stats make sense? You can go in and how you can look at everything, narrow it down. I mean, you got everything you could possibly want as far as data. So today, again, I just wanted to give you sort of a preview on the future side of things. Um, we've done a little bit on the five minute stuff. We're going to be doing more on the five minute stuff uh, this weekend. Lori's doing a Traders Helping Traders webinar. So if you're inside the P3 Elite subscriptions or day trading plan subscriptions, you can hop in and see that. Uh, it'll be in the Elite room. It's on the calendar. Uh, there'll be another Monday night webinar on the five-minute binaries as well and uh, how she's using Trendcatcher to trade that. She'll be coming out this weekend. We'll be coming out a little bit more in detail next week. Uh, the confirmation indicator, there's really nothing to do. You just turn it on. Uh, the confirmation indicator is if I opened a 10-minute chart and I put Trendcatcher on it, is it red or is it green? Man, it's, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to make it simpler than that. But that's that's what it is. Like, are they both green or are they both red? Right, so if I add trend catcher like here, the confirmation, let's just put both of them on for a second. I keep getting a stupid error. Um, Open a different chart. Let's see here. It'll be out next week once we get rid of those two errors that pop up. Um, let's see here. This up. But yeah, basically, like if the 10 minute is giving a short signal and the diagnostic bar is giving a green signal, then you won't get a signal on the diagnostic chart if you turn confirmation on. Well, the rules are there. I just gave you the rules. The rules are buy when it turns green, sell when it turns red, trend the line. That's all there is. I mean, there's that's the rules. So, guy, like it, it really isn't getting any more complex than that. Um, the release date will be next week. As soon as we just make sure that it's consistently working across all beta users without any errors popping up, we're getting it out there. So, I'm hoping you know, no, no. My goal would be no later than next Thursday's webinar. Hopefully sooner. Let's see here. But yeah, so my, I would expect it to come out earlier, but no later than next Thursday. We need to make sure it's all working, and then we want to put the training videos up so people aren't just, I got it, now what? But... Uh, will it work with spreads? Um, there's going to be a challenge on spreads. I mean, straight up, uh, you can't... A lot of these trades, I mean, are, you saw 10, 10 ticks, 20 ticks, 30 ticks. That's going to be a little harder to do unless... Now, gold would be the one exception because it's a tick wide. Um, FX, I mean, two, three ticks. But you're going to find spreads that have really tight ticks and that move and locked up with the market. So it's going to be a little bit harder to use with spreads. It really is meant for futures and forex. If you want to try to apply it to the derivative on spreads, you can. But it won't work as well. I mean, just the fact of, you know, I mean, if your spread's five ticks wide, I mean, add five ticks to each loss, you know, four ticks or whatever, and subtract four ticks from each win, that, that adds up pretty quick, okay? So, this, I mean, there's there, it's not a scalping strategy. I mean, there's times when we're making 100 ticks and 80 ticks and 70 ticks and 60 ticks, but there are a lot of times when we're making 20 ticks, 30 ticks, 17 ticks, five ticks. So, you're gonna have to that bid ask spread is gonna affect you if you're trading the spreads. Now you could use it like on minis, 
You know, like, Will has a mini contract that is $5 a tick instead of 10 uh, You know, things like that would also be an option. On Forex, you can go down to minis and micros and get you know, a pip wide, right? So uh, that might also be an option for you if you're trying to figure out how to, like, really keep that risk down to, like, a dollar a tick. Forex might be that choice for you, okay? Um, obviously, a lot of you international traders, you got CFDs. All right. Um, so, but I mean, you, just, you need to be very attentive on this strategy because of how tight this, the uh, profits are on some of them. I mean, a lot of them are huge, but some are small. To get the stats to really work in your favor, I mean, you're going to want that tighter bid offer spread. And I'd love to say, yes, you can work on spreads, but you know, I want you to be successful. And I think you'd be better off with either using one of the spreads like gold that is really tight or switching over to like FX, you know, spot or something like that if you're going for just the smaller tick size. And for this specific strategy, okay, I mean, elite, I mean, we'll get some big bangerang trades over there. So, you know, um, and then uh, let's see here. Now, I mean, you also could hedge out. I mean, you could be hedging out futures with spreads. You could use spreads in the sense of, hey, I'm, I know I'm going to lose maybe a few more ticks when I lose, but I don't have to take a stop like the other guy does. So that might also be, but I mean, you're, you're going to have to weigh that out. Like, I can only build it on the futures. I can't build it on every spread price built in. But, I mean, I love the spreads. But, anyways, I just want to give you the, maybe that's too much information, but I do want to give you an accurate answer so you're set up for success. Um, um, applying this to binaries would would be different than what I'm showing you with all the stats. All the stats I'm showing you are based on trading futures or Forex or stocks, like a direct market okay the binaries would be the five minute binary trading if you didn't see monday night's webinar go check it out if you haven't been inside the room and lori's doing five minute binaries go check it out um because she's going through and she's trading them but we're using like three tick bars and we're just trading the oscillations looking at volume with it and it's we're like scalping 2025 20, you know ticks out over and over and over and over again um out of the binaries so and the difference, you know, a uh, guy asked, well, if you had 10 grand, what would you rather do, binaries or futures? The, honestly, both. <laughs> as funny as that sounds, I'd probably put like, you know, seven or eight grand over in futures and a few grand over in binaries, okay? But there's a lot of dead time, right? You're sitting there and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. And like, let's say you're trading 9.30 to 12, guy, all right? You're going in and... Well, there's just no trend catchers because it happens to be short and it's long and nothing's coming up. But, man, there's plenty of moves you can be taking advantage of. That's where you're the five minutes to fill in the time. When I was talking to Kevin about that. It's like, we know, why you're sitting there? Because there may be a day where you don't have a trade. Maybe it just doesn't line up. But I guarantee you there's five-minute trades all the time. So you can be doing smaller scalps. It may not sound big, but, I mean, if you're making 20 bucks, you know, and, like, I mean, Lori, she does, like, three at a time. So you're making 60 bucks, you do that. You know, four or five times, you know, that's two or three hundred dollars where you're sitting there and waiting on a trend catcher trade on the future. That may end up making you eight hundred bucks in one trade or more. I mean, two thousand dollars in one trade. So it's really it's sort of funny. It's almost like a good way to pass the time with low risk and still, you know, actually make something for your time for sitting there. So I guess the bottom line, the, the answer would be I would, you know, I do and would do both. So yes, you are trading this manually. It's just automatically giving you the signals. That is correct. And it's automatically doing the historical stats for you. If Windows updates, will you update? Yeah, you know, like Windows nine or ten or twelve or whatever they're coming out with next yes we'll we'll keep it up to date with all windows versions so as far as working on 20 minute binaries um i know that john has played with some i know Lori has played with it and she said she likes it really well in the 20 minute binaries as well so she'll actually trade the 20 minute binaries with the trend catcher and um, I've looked at that. That's a little good. I haven't, I haven't personally traded a whole lot on them. So I only have so many times I can trade. Uh, but 
so yeah, that's apparently we've had a lot of stories like in that. She'll probably talk to you more about that in the late room. Um, if you go into recent webinars, you'll see the five minute binary webinar we did this Monday under education webinars, recent webinars. We're actually going over five binaries every Monday night. I'm building on top of it every Monday. But if you go right there, just go to newest webinars. Yeah, there you go. Trading five minute binaries during the day, we'll trading five minute binaries at night. Um, does this work well with DTP? That actually is a great question. Yes. One of the biggest benefits of it is if you're trying to catch those, how do I go to target two, three, four, five, Mike? Uh, a lot of our traders, as you probably know, because I've seen your name around, well, obviously a lot, <laughs> uh, is using the diagnostic bars on the day trading plans instead of 10-minute bars. Uh, and using uh, the trend catcher as a way to trail to those additional targets. So it's a very simple way to trail. Not necessarily always as a confirmation, but as a trailing method to get in on them. So yeah, and same question for you, Robert. Yep. So are we still working on the new website? We are. So we've just been, there's so much core stuff we've been building in the back end that's actually data-based, like literally databases um, on the new site. But yeah, we are still working on the new site. And hopefully we'll have something to show you here in the next 60 days. But yeah, we'll keep uh, updating in the future and ongoing as Windows updates. Yes. So we did that with Windows 8 when it came out and Windows 7 when it came out and all that. So as far as packages and pricing, uh, well, obviously we're going to let all of our members try it for free. Um, and then we'll figure out the pricing and packaging like next week. So right now I'm just trying to make it work and get it in your hands. So... But everybody will be able to check it out for free. Can you trade FX on Ninja? Yep. You can trade FX directly off Ninja, or you can use Ninja and trade it off MetaTrader, whatever you know suits you best. Use this for charting or use this for trading and trading. So most of our traders go through FXCM, but there are a few other brokers that also tie in for FX on Ninja. Awesome. All right. Well, um, hopefully that was a good preview. You got a you know sort of idea of what it is and how it's coming, and I just wanted to let you see why we're excited about it and some of the ways we're working at using it. I'm sure there'll be a lot of new ways that the people will come up with using it. But my first goal was how do I get a system that is super simple that somebody can come in and trade out of the gate that has the stats to you know go back and look at it without having to spend hours and hours and hours on stats that limits your risk and lets your profits run. And um, let you know what would be the best time to trade easily. Find that best time to trade that would work for your schedule. So, and I think we got it. So now we just got to, like I said, tighten it up and we'll push it out there and get it out to you sometime next week. Okay. And we'll, uh, we'll announce it. We'll email it and, you know, tweet it and post it in the rooms and all that stuff. Y'all are welcome. Y'all have a great day and I will, I'll see y'all in the rooms. Thanks.